Hello everyone, this is Michelle. Welcome back to my channel. So today is the first day of February and if you like my video please hit the like button. If you have not subscribed and you wish to subscribe after watching my video, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. So in the past I've done five stanzas but because we're basically at the end of Velispo, I decided to go ahead and just do the six that remain of Velispo, and then on the um, 22nd, I will be back. So it'll probably be about three weeks instead of two. I just realized that it was going to actually be probably about two, maybe three weeks. But I'll be back on the 22nd with the uh, Havamal, which is actually the longest of the uh, poems. So um, here goes. Okay, so this is 61 through 66. In wonder's beauty, once again, shall the golden table stand mid the grass which the gods had owned in days of old. The Halsenbroke version of the two lines runs, the gods shall find there wondrous fair the golden tables amid the grass. No line four is indicated in the manuscript. Golden table, stanza eight, and note. Then fields unsowed bear ripened fruit. All ills grow better, and Baldur comes back. Baldur and Hoth dwell in Horop's battle hall, and the mighty gods would you know yet more. Baldur stands at 32 and note. Baldur and his brother Hoth, who unwillingly slew him at Loki's instigation, return together, their union being a symbol of the new age of peace. Horolp, the nether name for Othin, his battle hall is Valhall. Then Holner's wins the prophet wand, and the sons of the brothers of Tviga abide in Vindheim now, would you know yet more. Uh, no line two is indicated in the manuscripts. Holner it stands at 18 and note, in this new age, he has the gift of foretelling the future. To Vega, the twofold, another name for Othan, his brothers are Vil and V. Little is known of them and nothing beyond this reference of their sons. Vidheim, home of the wind, heaven. Okay. More fair than the sun, a hall I see, roof with gold on Gimli's it stands. There shall the righteous rulers dwell, and happiness ever there shall they have. The stanza is quoted by Snorri Gimli. Snorri makes this the name of the hall itself, while here it appears to refer to a mountain on which the hall stands. It is home of the happy as opposed to another hall not mentioned for the dead. Snorri's description of the second hall is based on Lisbo 38 when he quotes, and perhaps the stanza properly belongs after 64. There comes on high all power to hold, a mighty lord, all lands he rules. And then there's like these little dots. And, uh, the stanza is not found in Regulus and is probably virtuous. Uh, no lines is indicated in the Hulsbrook version, but later manuscript rule, ma paper manuscripts add two lines running. Rule he orders and rights he fixes, laws he ordains, and ever, uh, and ever shall live. The name of this new ruler is nowhere given, and of course the suggestion of Christianity is unavoidable. It is not certain, however, that even this stanza refers to Christianity, and if it does, it may have been interloped long after the rest of the poem was, comp was composed. From below the dragon dark comes forth, Nithgog flying from Nethavajol, the bodies of men on his wings he bears, the serpent bright, now must I sink. Uh, the stanza, which fits so badly with the preceding ones, may well have been interloped. It has been suggested that the dragon making a last attempt to rise is destroyed. This event marks the end of evil in the world, but in both manuscripts the final half-line does not refer to the dragon, but as the gender shows to the Vola herself who sinks into the earth a sort of conclusion to the entire prophecy. Presumably the stanza bearing the last half line, which is probably intended as a conclusion of the poem, belongs somewhere in the description of the great struggle. Nithgog, the dragon at the roots of Yggdrasil, uh, 
mythological dark crags nowhere else mentioned must die, the manuscript have must she. All right. So that is the end of Vallispo. I hope that you have enjoyed uh, me reading it and trying to pronounce the words to the best of my ability. The Havamal is one of my favorite uh, poems in the entire book, and I'm going to have a lot of joy in actually, um, actually uh, reciting it and saying it. Um, but yeah. So thank you everybody who has uh, been with me from the beginning of doing these videos. I really appreciate it. Uh, as I said, I will be uh, I won't be doing these for two weeks, but I am going to uh, enjoy doing them when I get back to them. So until next time, may you be happy, healthy, most importantly, be safe, and hell to the gods. Bye.